Hello? Hello? Oh, where am I? Oh. Hello? Hello? Oh! Over here! Over here! Tracker found him. Ryder and his Paw Patrol pups were in the lookout tower when an important message came onto the screen. It's Captain Turbot, cried Ryder. He's been walrus watching and not looking where he was going. His boat is stuck on some rocks and the tide has gone out. If he can't free the boat, he will end up in the bottom of the bay. We must rescue him and pull him off the rocks. Zuma, I need you and your hovercraft. And Sky, I need you and your helicopter to guide us through the rocks. Let's go! Zuma flew down the slide first and jumped into his hovercraft. Sky was next and left in her helicopter. Ryder followed and hopped onto his ATV. They soon reached the sea. Sky located Captain Turbot and informed Ryder where he was. She could see where they had to pull the boat. Very soon, Zuma and Ryder appeared by the boat. Ryder had converted his ATV to travel on water. Quick Zuma, throw the end of the rope to Captain Turbot. He can tie it to the front of the boat and then we can pull him out, cried Ryder. Captain Turbot caught the rope and tied it to the boat. Ryder and Zuma attached the other two ends and began to pull. It's too heavy, cried Ryder. We can't pull him. Have you got anything heavy you can throw off the boat to make it lighter? Shouted Ryder. Captain Turbot had a look and then saw Wally the walrus sitting on the boat. Oh Wally, he cried. You'll have to get off. And Wally jumped off the boat. That's better, sighed Captain Turbot. Okay, let's try again, he shouted. This time the boat finally moved. But there was a terrible scraping sound. Oh no, cried Captain Turbot. There's a big hole in the side of the boat. If we don't fix it, the boat will sink. We need to mend the hole, cried Ryder. I'll call Rocky. He'll have something to patch the hole. I'm on to it, answered Rocky. And he flew down the slide and opened the back of his recycling truck. I'll get Rocky, said Skye, and off she flew. Rocky pulled out a thin sheet of metal. This will do, he cried. Just then, Skye appeared. I've come to take you to Ryder, she said. Let's attach the metal sheet to my wheel and then we can carry it to Ryder. And so they did. And off they went. They managed to pass the metal sheet to Ryder. And then Zuma and Ryder jumped into the water to mend the hole. That should do the trick, smiled Ryder. Let's finally pull the boat to shore. 
With the hole mended, Zuma and Ryder managed to save the boat. Back on safe ground, Captain Turbot thanked Zuma and Ryder for rescuing him and promised that next time he went whale watching, he would be a lot more careful where he was going. Today was training day for the Paw Patrol pups. Pups, I've got four badges for you, but you'll have to earn them, said Ryder. Are you ready? They were. Nearby, Percy and Duncan were hard at work. But... Oh dear! Logs and paint went everywhere! Oh dear, I'm really sorry, apologised Duncan. Looks like they need help. That's the alarm. Rocky, it's for you, said Ryder. Are you ready? Of course, replied Rocky, and off he went. Ah, oh, Rocky, we have a problem. All of that wood and paint is ruined. What are we going to do with it? asked Duncan. He had an idea and got to work. He made a birdhouse. Oh, that's lovely, said Duncan. Thanks, Rocky, said Percy. And look, birds are already using it. Rocky's work was done so he returned to the others. Well done Rocky, you've earned your badge, said Ryder. He opened it. Inside was Batman. That's the alarm again. Pepper's in a spot of bother. She's lost in the snow. This one's for you, Everest. Oh, I'm ever so lost. And it's so cold. What am I going to do? Pepper wondered. Luckily, Everest arrived. Don't worry, Pepper. Let's get you out of here before this snow gets any worse. And suddenly, avalanche! They got out just in time. Thank you, Everest, said Pepper. No problem, she replied. Well, Everest, you've earned your badge too, said Ryder. She opened it. Princess Sophia was inside. Nearby, Mater was trying to cross a river. When... He fell in. Uh-oh, mate is in trouble. Zuma, this one's for you. So he rushed over and jumped in the river himself. He pushed Mater to the side. And out of the water. Thanks, Zuma, said Mater. No problem, replied Zuma. So he returned to the others. Well done, Zuma. Here's your badge.
Inside was Olaf. One last mission. A minion is lost in the forest. He needs your help, Tracker, said Ryder. Hello? Hello? Ah, oh, where am I? Ah. Oh. Hello? Hello? Oh, over here! Over here! Tracker found him and took him back to the others. Oh, thank you, Tracker. Thank you, thank you. You've earned your badge too, said Ryder. Tracker opened it. SpongeBob was inside. It was the end of the day, so the pups gathered around Ryder. Well done everyone, you have all earned your badges. Ryder had some challenges for his pups. Today you're all going to earn your badges, he said. That's the alarm. Marshall, it's for you. There's a fire nearby. You need to sort it out. So off he went. He had an idea. And he used the hose. fire was out. Well done Marshall, you've earned your badge, announced Ryder. So he opened it. McQueen was inside. That's the alarm again. There's a broken water tower. It's going to flood the track. Rubble, you're up. So he went off to sort it out. He needed to stop the water from flooding the track. So he used a truck to catch the water while he fixed it. Well done Rubble, you've earned your badge too, said Ryder. A little Thomas was inside. Sky, there's a problem in the air. Sidley is in trouble. You've got to help him. She changed into her flying gear. She helped stabilise him and also helped him land. Oh thank you, said Siddley. No problem, Sky replied. Well done Sky, you've earned your badge, said Ryder. Danny Dog was inside.
Just you left now, Chase, said Ryder. Uh oh, the green goblin's nearby, and he's stolen a very expensive crown. Get him, Chase! Uh oh! The green goblin put something sharp on the ground. Puncturing a tire. So Chase raced after him on foot. He got him. Spider-Man arrived. Thanks for catching him, he said. No problem, Chase replied. So Spider-Man took the Green Goblin away and Chase earned his badge. Inside was a minion. Yay! Hello! Well done, Chase. So congratulations, pups. You've all earned your badges. All engines have their own jobs. Thomas takes Annie and Clarabelle. Gordon takes the Express. And Edward is good at being a back engine. He also shunts trucks at the yard. Yay, Edward's here! Hey, watch this! The other engines don't think Edward works hard enough. Edward is too old to be helping us now, said James. He's too weak and slow. I say he should retire and be replaced with a new faster engine. We don't need back engines anymore anyway, boomed Gordon. Big trains certainly don't need him to help. We are big and powerful enough. Maybe Edward should retire. What the engines didn't realise was that Sir Topham Hatt listened to the whole thing and came up with a plan. The next morning, Sir Topham Hatt told the engines he needed to borrow Edward for some important other work and that Duck was going to replace him for the day. Bah, good riddance, said Gordon. We don't need a back engine anyway. Not Edward, it's Duck! <laughs> what? Duck! Quack, quack, quack! <laughs> oh, oh, watch this! Oh no! Ooh! Uncoupled truck! Uh, yeah, yeah. 
What the minion didn't realize, this is the bridge which Gordon crosses with the express. Huh? Uh-oh. Just in time. Phew! That was a close one. But now, the bridge was too steep. Gordon couldn't start up again. He needs a back engine to help him push the express. So Topham Hat made sure Edward was ready to save the day. First of all, Edward cleared the track by moving the minion and the duck. Then came back to help Gordon up the hill. And soon Gordon had enough speed to continue without Edward. At the end of the day, Gordon met Edward. I was completely wrong. The Isle of Sodor is lucky to have a hard working back engine like you, Edward. Not only is Hero one of the strongest engines on the Isle of Sodor, he is also one of the nicest and kindest. One day, at Farmer McCall's farm, Diesel was helping load milk into some of the troublesome trucks. Take some of this, trucks. Diesel, stop hitting the truck so hard. You have to, Edward. You need to show them who's boss. Hiya! Soon, Hero appeared to collect the milk. Good morning, Diesel. Good morning, Trucks. <laughs> oh, Hero, stop being so nice to them. All of the trucks are troublesome. You need to show them who's boss. No, Diesel. You must be polite and kind to them. I am master of the railway. And Hero collected the trucks and began his journey. But what he didn't realise was, Diesel had already spilled the milk from hitting them too hard. <laughs> All of the way, the troublesome trucks were biffing and bashing, but Hero remained calm and polite. So Topham Hat was waiting at Knapford Station. Ah, finally! The milk has arrived for the cafeteria! I'll just get the milk. Oh no! Oh no! I'm so sorry, sir. I don't know what happened. Hmm, hero. There's still more milk to pick up. I hope this time you'll be more careful. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Hero arrived back at Farmer McCall's farm to collect the rest of the milk. What's the matter, Hero? Ah, Diesel. I delivered the first lot of milk, 
but it spilled all over Sir Topham Hatt. I feel so ashamed. See? You should have shown the trucks who's boss and give them a bash. No, Diesel, that is never the right way. It is always best to be polite and kind. Diesel was angry. He thought Hero should listen to him and take his advice. So he thought he'd teach Hero a lesson. He quietly coupled on to the back of Hero's trucks. And soon, Hero was off, on his way to Knapford Station. Diesel kept hitting the trucks to make it hard for Hero, but Hero remained calm and polite. But when Hero began climbing the bridge, Diesel turned on his brakes, making it really hard for Hero. And going down the bridge, Diesel helped the trucks go as fast as they could. What's going on? Hero suddenly saw Knapford Station ahead and tried to brake. As Hero stopped, milk poured out of the truck onto Sir Topham Hatt once again. Oh no, said Hero. Diesel felt embarrassed, but before he could sneak away, Thomas pulled up next to him. Diesel, where are you going? Hero, why was Diesel pushing you? Diesel, was it you biffing and bashing me? And he spilled your milk this morning, added Edward. Diesel. Um... Sorry. I am very disappointed in you, Diesel. Hero has done nothing wrong today. In fact, Hero, I want you to show Diesel how to properly treat troublesome trucks. The polite and kind way. Yes, sir. Oh, Hero felt very proud. James was busy moving sheep around. All was going well. <coughs> Who put those rocks there? He said. He looked around. There were no buildings anywhere to be seen. To make matters worse now, his sheep had escaped, and he was right in the middle of nowhere. His driver radioed the search and rescue centre. The search and rescue centre was a busy place, but when they heard where James had derailed, they said he was too far away and that they would pass his message to the West Coast Rescue Centre. The West Coast Rescue Centre was somewhat smaller and quieter. In fact, it was no more than a siding by the sea. And ready for action was Jerome. Fishing. He didn't have many rescues to attend to, and he liked fishing, and his hook could reach the sea from the siding. Suddenly, Ryan came by. Jerome, Jerome, we've got a rescue. Some, uh, some sheep have derailed and James has escaped and he's running all over the fields. Calm down, Ryan, said Jerome. I think you must mean that James has derailed. Uh, oh yes, yes, that's it. Come on, hook me up. Ryan hooked Jerome and off they set. In the meantime, James heard an engine. Rescuers, said James. Unfortunately for James, it was Duck pulling Toad. Oh dear, said Duck. I'm sure Jerome will be here sometime soon, this week. He left. Another train was heard. That was quick, thought James. This time it was Oliver. 
Oh dear, said Oliver. Your sheep have escaped, said Oliver. I know, said James. Sorry I can't help, said Oliver, and off he went. James heard another train. This time it was Ryan with Jerome. Oh, at last, said James. Back me in, said Jerome. And Ryan did. Jerome spun round. First of all, he cleared the rocks from the track. And then heaved James back on the rails. The cattle truck followed. Thanks, said James. I need to catch the sheep now. Ah, oh, don't worry, I have a plan, said Jerome. He thought about his fishing. What sheep like is nice juicy grass, he said, and he put some lovely grass on his hook. The sheep saw the juicy grass and followed the hook, which Jerome kept moving towards the truck. The other sheep followed like, well, like sheep, right into the cattle truck. Thank you, said James. No problem, said Jerome. James then continued his journey with the sheep. Ryan took Jerome back to the West Coast Rescue Centre and back to his fishing. Thanks for watching our story with the new Trackmaster Ryan and Jerome set. We've seen Ryan before, but this one has mud splashes, as does Jerome the Rescue Crane. Jerome's arm can be raised and lowered, and his whole cab can be turned completely around. His hook can be pushed out of the way for moving around the track. For a two-part vehicle with a crane arm, he is amazingly stable going around tight bends. Look out! Vroom! Ouch! Bertie! 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 Yeah? Get off me! Alright. Uh, sorry. Why on earth are you going so fast? It's dangerous! I'm pretending to be my hero, Lightning McQueen. Who the devil is Lightning McQueen? He's only one of the fastest and one of the most famous race cars in the world. He's so fast. Bah! He can't be as fast as me. I'm an express engine. I bet he is. Bet he's not. Bet he is. Bet he's not. Is. Not. Is. Not is oh i don't have time to be arguing with you bertie so topham hat wants to see you right away yes sir you wanted to see me yes bertie i have an important job for you today i need you to take some passengers on a long journey to radiator springs radiator springs that's where Lightning McQueen lives. I might actually get to meet him. Ha <laughs> ha, thought you might like that, Bertie. Now go and pick up your passengers. Oh, Bertie, where are you off to? I'm taking these passengers all the way to Radiator Springs. Oh, doesn't Lightning McQueen live there? Maybe you'll meet him. I hope so. Well, good luck.
Hey, a customer. You want to buy any organic fuel? Um, uh, I'm good, thanks. Hey, do you know if Lightning McQueen is around? Oh, um, I think I may have seen him practicing on the race course over there. Thank you very much. Whoa, a bus! Hey, you want a new coat of paint? It's Ramon, by the way. No, 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 I, I like my red paint. But, um, do you know where Lightning McQueen is? Ah, you're a fan, no? Yes, I'm a huge fan. He's near the racetrack, just over there. Thanks. Wow, the real Lightning McQueen. I'm one of your biggest fans. Oh, that's great. I don't really have any bus fans. Well, you're welcome to visit Radiator Springs whenever you want. Hey, you want to watch me practice on the racetrack? Would I? Here goes. I'm sure that's faster than Gordon. We're flying, Annie and Clarabelle, said Thomas to his coaches. Up in the fluffy white clouds. No more rails for us. Hello, Gordon, said Thomas. Well, I've seen everything now. A flying train. Thomas. Whispering woods aren't so frightening up here, said Thomas. Thomas's wings were working well. We're higher than Cranky. Hello, Porter. Hello, Percy. Hello, Thomas said Percy. We're going into space now, Percy, said Thomas. Be careful, said Percy. Space was wonderful, but they quickly came lower again. Then there was trouble. The clouds became thicker and Thomas couldn't see where he was going. Where are my rails? Where are my rails? He said. lost control. He was diving towards the ground. Wake up! Wake up! said Annie. We'll be late. Thomas opened his eyes. Come on Thomas, your rest in the siding has finished. Come on! Phew! It had all been a dream, and he was back on the rails again. Thanks for watching our story featuring the new winged Thomas. Love his facial expression. 
Anyway, he has two wings that fold down and up again. A spoiler which also folds up and then down again to let him get under any bridges when he's on the ground. His coaches Annie and Clarabelle are painted blue and both are wearing flying goggles. He looks great with his wings down and spoiler up flying around the track. Although don't put anything too near the track, his wings will catch them. He looks quite like Thunderbird 1, doesn't he? Thomas was enjoying his afternoon when he went around a sharp corner and he ran right into a very large pumpkin that was on the line. Thomas couldn't see anything. Don't worry, said his driver, I can see to drive you and they moved forward but Thomas did look very silly. Percy was also enjoying his day. Then the same thing happened to him. Who turned the lights out? said a shocked Percy. Don't worry, said his driver. I can see. And Percy moved forwards. They both now looked very silly indeed. Percy then stopped at the crossing. Who's there? said Thomas. I don't know, said Percy. I can't see. Oh, it's you, Percy. Um, I've had a bit of an accident, said Thomas. Me too, said Percy. Come on, let's get back to clean up. And they left. In the bushes lurked Diesel 10. Ha, ha. Silly steamies. Now the tip of the sheds were being repainted, so the engines were using a set of tunnels as shelter. How's your headache, Percy? said James, trying not to laugh. You look a little under the weather, Thomas, said Gordon, also trying not to laugh. Thomas and Percy said nothing. The engine wash was broken and they felt very embarrassed with their pumpkin heads on. The next day the pumpkins had been removed, but Thomas and Percy were still feeling embarrassed. Of course, said Gordon, it's Halloween, a time for pumpkins, ghosts, bats and spiders. Did you say ghosts and bats, said James, and we're in these old tunnels. Yes, said Gordon. They don't scare a big engine like me, though. Thomas and Percy couldn't wait to get away from James and Gordon. While they were out, they got the feeling that they were being followed. said Thomas. A ghost. Uh, I'm, I'm scared, said Percy. I know someone who can help us, said Thomas. Ha, ha, ha. 
silly steam is. Thomas then met a real ghost train, a very friendly ghost train called Ghosty. Don't worry Thomas, there are no other real ghosts around here and I'll find out who is responsible for this. That pleased Thomas. Ghosty then scared away all the fake ghosts. He then met Diesel 10, who was blocking the crossing. I might have known it was you, said Ghosty. You're not a real ghost. You don't scare me, and you can't get past me, said Diesel 10. Ghosty then moved forward right through Diesel 10. Uh, OK, uh, now I'm scared, said Diesel 10. And off he went. Ghosty chased it him. It was me. Now. Leave me alone! Leave me alone! said Diesel 10. Thomas and Percy were pleased it was all over, although they were still embarrassed about the pumpkin heads. Thanks for watching our story. If you like it, go on, give us a thumbs up and then have a look at some of our other videos by clicking these images and subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon!